How's it going everybody? Today we're going to be working on this. This is my Festool BPS-12 drill driver. Uh, I really, really love this drill. I bought, I bought it about a year ago, used, um, and I found out later on that the batteries actually don't hold a charge very well. So I started looking at some options online, looking at getting the batteries rebuilt, sending it off to someone. I looked at buying new batteries, uh, and it turned out that those were all rather expensive options. And so at that point I kind of thought that, okay, well, I guess I will just save up or I'll really only use this drill for really small jobs. But then I started doing some more research and I found out that rebuilding these NICAD or nickel cadmium batteries is actually rather straightforward, easy, uh, and cheap. And so today I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, I did make a few mistakes along the way and hopefully that will help you from not making the same mistakes I made, but it turned out very well. The uh, battery holds its charge much longer, the drill works flawlessly, and uh, it was actually a pretty fun project. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do that today. So here's everything you're going to need. You're going to need your battery, a piece of cardboard, a magnetic strip, a screwdriver, a pair of needle-nose pliers, wire cutters, a knife, a soldering iron, solder, flux, a mask, super glue, some electrical tape, q-tips, and a toothpick. Now this particular battery uses Torx head screws. There's four of them which you're going to uh, unscrew. After unscrewing the screws you're going to open up the top here and that will reveal the batteries inside. There's two little tabs here, one on each side. Go ahead and pull those out. They just pull out like this and set them aside. You'll then see some cardboard uh, that's covering up the tops of the batteries. Go ahead and gently pry that off. You definitely don't want to break this because you're going to reuse it later on. Go ahead and dump out the batteries onto your cardboard. And if you notice here, you'll see that there, the tabs are actually spot welded in place. So it's impossible to actually unsolder them or desolder them. So instead, what we're going to do is just snip off the terminals cutting off the tab as you can see here and we're going to re this is the only thing we're going to reuse we're going to need this in order to attach the new batteries to the battery pack it's crucial they have a way of knowing where the batteries are supposed to go and in what order so i'm going to trace it on the cardboard here using a sharpie and then mark where which whether it's the positive or negative side facing up on this orientation currently so i'll go ahead and just mark that on my cardboard using plus and minuses and then once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and mark which batteries are connected uh, in which order. This way, again, when I go back to put it together, I, I have something to reference from. Um, you could also keep the battery pack together and use that, but this, this helps me visualize it on the actual work surface. Now, here's the mistake I made. I actually bought the wrong size battery. Uh, what you want is a sub-C battery. Uh, what I what I bought was a sub C four fifths battery or four five C battery. Um, I was not very careful when researching this, and I saw what looked like sub C batteries on eBay, and I bought them because the price was good. Um, so you're gonna have to be a little more careful. I would encourage you to open up your battery pack before placing any orders, uh, and then making sure to buy the right battery. Now, in the end, I made it work. It works fine. It's the same voltage and everything. So it's not going to be the end of the world, but I did have to kind of find some creative ways to make it fit um, better. So that is the mistake that I made. You can see here, these are the correct batteries. These are the ones I bought. The first thing you wanna do with your batteries is pull off one tab from each battery. I like to pull off five positive tabs and five negative tabs. It doesn't really matter, but um, that is what works best for me. I found that using your pliers and sort of walking the tab towards the back, peeling it back, works best to do this. The next step is to strip these little plastic covers on the tabs. I found that using a knife and sort of sawing down to the metal, flipping it over, doing the same on the other side, and then gently pulling with the needle nose pliers uh, was the most effective way. It took a little bit of practice, it was kind of tease at first, but actually once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. And you should get a nice clean cut like this. So go ahead and do that to all of the tabs remaining. 
Next, you're going to need to arrange your batteries in the same order that the uh, old batteries came out. So pay close attention to which side is up, positive or negative, and uh, this is where the cardboard comes in rather handy. Now, I mentioned the magnetic strip earlier. This is not necessary, but it is very helpful. I found that by using this magnetic strip, I can kind of align the batteries exactly the way I want them, hold them there, and then apply the glue. So as you can see here, the batteries do want to roll on you a bit, and so I used my uh, needle nose pliers on one end to hold the batteries from rolling around, and then my knife on the other. That holds the batteries nice and still. And then once I have them where I want them, I go ahead and glue them, paying close attention to have the tabs lining up with uh, where the terminals on the battery they're supposed to connect to to make your life a little bit easier when you go to solder them. So apply some super glue and spread it out with a toothpick. Now, another mistake I made here was using uh, too thick of a super glue or too much of it potentially. Uh, it made it take very long to dry. So maybe something like hot glue or just using a, a thinner amount may have been smarter. You're then going to go ahead and turn on your soldering iron and I use the number four setting on mine. And then you're going to go ahead and dab just a little bit of flux on the battery terminals that you're going to solder to. Then go ahead and add some solder, spread it out nice and thin. Repeat on the second cell. And then once you're happy with the solder, you're going to go ahead and clean it off a little bit with a Q-tip. Apply flux to the tabs as well. And then you're going to put some solder on your soldering iron. And then using a finger or toothpick, kind of push down on the tab to where you want it. And then apply the solder on top. The flux should help it connect rather quickly, as you see here. Be careful not to leave the soldering tip on the battery for too long as that may damage the cells. So just be quick and deliberate here. And then finally, you're going to attach the tab that connects the two sides of the battery together. I used a strip from the old battery, again, repeating the same process. Apply solder to the battery and then apply some flux to the tab and go ahead and solder the tab in place. The last thing you're going to solder is the actual terminal that connects the battery to the drill, or to the charger. So I went ahead and reapplied my little cardboard protective sleeve right here. I did have to modify it a little bit by cutting it down a bit just to make it fit under the new tabs, but that was no problem. And then again, apply some flux, apply the solder, go ahead and flux the uh, tabs, and then go ahead and solder the tabs to the terminal. Now, as you'll see here, I did use some electrical tape to hold the battery pack together. This made it a bit wider, which allowed me to kind of uh, fit it a little bit more tightly into the battery pack, which allowed me to keep the batteries up a little bit higher, thus making up for the lack of height since I bought the wrong batteries. Um, if this proves to not work, although I've had no issues so far, I may add some cardboard on the bottom to lift them up or just buy the correct batteries. Go ahead and screw the battery pack back together and then give it a test run. The batteries themselves came uh, basically fully discharged. As you can see here, I didn't get much right away, but I did prove that it would work. I then charged the battery pack and all is good. Thank you for watching.